Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to Grace this morning. God has uh, blessed us with a beautiful day, it looks like today. So glad you're here and hope you have a wonderful day, the rest of the day, whatever you have planned. A few things. Um, you may have seen in the newspaper, uh, I think it was yesterday, that uh, the city of Racine um, changed its, I don't know what they call it, safer Racine order as it, as it uh, applies to the uh, coronavirus. And so now churches are allowed 50% of seating capacity, which it was 25%. So obviously we have plenty of space here, so the, the limit was never really an issue for us. But I think that's a good sign that things are moving in the right direction. At least and we pray that it continues. Uh, so we'll just keep doing as we have been with our um, communion practice and social distancing and such. But just wanted to share that with you in case you hadn't heard that we're now allowed up to 50% from 25%. Um, also, we've been blessed um, to get some new equipment here at church, um, paper towel dispensers, the automated one, you just put your hand there and they, and they work, and then also some energy-efficient light bulbs. Um, so thank you to Gaylord and Bonnie a Widener for all their work these last couple of weeks installing them, as well as the Grace member who bought these for us. So um, we have a bunch of used ones downstairs in the fellowship hall of both light bulbs and the paper towel dispensers. They're free for the taking. So the light bulbs still work. They made sure that the ones that didn't work, those got thrown away. But the other ones work. They're used. But if you'd like any, please um, feel free to stop down there and pick some up. Also, next week is our um, scheduled quarterly voters meeting. It'll be really the first one we've had since January. We technically had one in April, but it lasted all of, I think, 30 seconds. So didn't really, I don't think that really counts. But um, so if you're able, please stay for that next week so we won't be having Bible class. So I'll be the voters meeting. Um, and then after the voters meeting, we're having a, a fundraiser luncheon, brats and bingo. Um, so if you're able to stay for that, please see um, Matthew or Laura Olson or myself, and we'll get you uh, set up with that. In our prayers today, please continue to pray for Tom Clark for healing for him. He's at the villa now by, on, Wash, uh, on Green Bay Road. Uh, so I was able to see him although it was through the window. You can't go in, but you could stand outside and talk through your phone. So all these new experiences for all of us. I'm not, I never did that before. I was always just go in and visit, but can't do that right now. But at least I got to see him, so that's a good thing. Um, please keep him in your prayers. Sheila Holbis was hospitalized this week. Uh, she's back home, but please keep her in her prayers for continued healing. And then Walter Bone as he continues to recover from his uh, shoulder injury. So again, thank you all for being here. God's blessings to you. And we'll begin our service today with our opening hymn, number 901, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. gates of beauty, Zion, let me enter there, where my soul in joyful duty waits for him who answers prayer. Oh, how blessed is this place, filled with solace, light, and grace. Gracious God, I come before Thee, come Thou also unto me, where we find Thee and adore Thee, 
fair our heaven on earth must be. To my heart, O oh, enter thou. Let it be thy temple now. Here thy praise is gladly chanted. Here thy seed is duly sown. Let my soul where it is planted bring forth precious sheaves alone so that all I hear may be fruitful unto life in me. Thou my faith increase and quicken, let me keep thy gift divine. Howsoe'er temptations thicken, may thy word still o'er me shine. As my guiding star through life, as my comfort in all strife. Speak, O God, and I will hear Thee. Let Thy will be done indeed. May I undisturbed draw near Thee while Thou dost Thy people feed. Here of life the fountain flows, here is balm for all our woes. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of a field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. 
and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven 
and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory be to Thee, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about Him, so that He got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And He told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as He sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the, when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our catechism reading is from the second article of the Apostles' Creed. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? Jesus has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. This is most certainly true. Our next hymn is hymn 577, Almighty God, Your Word is Cast. In the precious seed is sown, life-giving grace bestow, that all whose souls the truth receive, its saving power be known. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My first call as a pastor out of seminary was to St. Peter Lutheran Church in Hilbert, Wisconsin. It's 13 years ago already. It seems. Some days it seems like it was just yesterday. Other days it was like 26 years ago. <laughs> That's how these last four months have felt, right? 
Some days it seems like it just happened. And other days it's like, man, when is this going to be over with? But anyway, it was a wonderful place for me to begin my ministry. Many fine, loving Christian people there. Hilbert is, a, if you're not familiar with it, it's a small town, a village of about 1,000 people, roughly 20 miles from Appleton, southeast or so, 30 miles from south of Green Bay, surrounded by farms. So many of the members of the church were farmers, retired, and there were a few still active farmers as well. So I learned a little bit about farming, serving there for those five and a half years. For myself, I didn't really know much about farming prior to that. As you know, I grew up in Southern California. Not a lot of farming there. Orange County used to have lots and lots of orange trees. That's where it got its name, but not anymore. That was long before even I was around. And then I lived and went to college in Washington, D.C. That's a big city, of course. The smallest town I'd ever lived in prior to Hilbert was Fort Wayne, Indiana, when I went to seminary, which is a town of 250,000 plus people, second largest in Indiana. So I know when I first went there, I said, boy, this is kind of (laughs) small. Well, compared to L.A. and Washington, it is. But then I got to Hilbert, and um, I remember stepping outside my house and looking down the street, and I could see the end of town. I could see the farms, like... Oh, this is small. (laughs) Again, it wasn't far from Appleton or Green Bay, so there was plenty of shopping and such close by, but still, lots and lots of dairy and other farms around the village. And so I remember taking a little bit of a field trip um, to one of the farmers. I got to visit a few of the farms, but one in particular I remember, he gave me a tour of his operation there. And I was taken aback by just the level of technology and science that went into farming. I always imagined it was hard work, but just, just the, and the amount of money. I think that was the thing that really I was struck by. The equipment is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is 10 years ago, probably even more now. The, the sprayers and the, and the planters and the combines and the tractors, and they're, they're outfitted with GPS so they can practically drive themselves and and a lot of money goes into having the right kind of seed and the, and the right kind of uh, fertilizer and pesticides, and everything is calculated just so to try to maximize the yield at the end of the harvest, right? Nothing is really taken for chance. Of course, there's still a great reliance on God because there's only so much the farmer can control. And so you pray for good weather and... and uh, no hailstorms and things like that, abundant rain, so that at the end of the season, Lord willing, there's a bountiful crop and you can make a living for your family. Well, I thought about that experience uh, as I was reading our gospel lesson for today, where Jesus tells the parable of the sower. And as you read this parable, this sower He didn't sound like that farmer that I visited on Hilbert, who was very careful with everything he did. Rather, this sower seems kind of, what would you say, reckless, wasteful. He's just scattering this seed all over the place, almost willy-nilly kind of. Jesus says that some of the seeds fell along the path, Now, why would you plant along a path or a road? Even I know that. That won't work very well. Some of it fell along the path. Some fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much soil. So even though these little seedlings came up, when they got hot and dry, they withered away. Some fell among thorns. Why would there be thorns out there? I I remember... Uh, in the you know all the work that was done to pick up all the stones and the rocks in the, in the early in the season to get the the fields ready for planting, but anyway, in this sower he threw some among the thorns, and so the the seeds grew up, but so did the weeds, and they choked the the little seedlings and they died. It was only some of them, maybe I don't know a quarter or so. It doesn't say exactly that fell on good soil. And it was those that produced grain and a bountiful crop. 
Well, why is Jesus telling us this story? I guess that's the first question we should ask. I don't think it's because he's trying to give instructions to farmers of his day about how they are to plant their fields. They knew how to do that already, and certainly these instructions I don't think would go over very well. Rather, we read that he told the disciples and the people many things in parables. And as I teach our confirmation students, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He's taking an example or illustration from everyday life, especially for an agricultural society like it was there in Israel, to teach the people something about God and his kingdom. And so Jesus will interpret the, and explain the parable for us in the second half of the reading, and we see what it is Jesus is in fact teaching us through it. The sower, of course, would be the Lord, God, and the seed is his word, the word of the kingdom. And now all of a sudden the parable begins to make a little more sense. Rather than being reckless or wasteful with sowing seed to produce corn, instead you could say that God is extravagant generous. He's lavish. He wants his word, the seed, to be sown and spread any and everywhere. Because there's no limit to his word. It's not like you have an in, a finite supply of seed and you've got to make sure you put it in the right place. His word, is, as he is, is infinite. He wants it to go any and everywhere. For our scripture says God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that truth, of course, is Jesus, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, the one through whom no one can come to the Father except through him. And faith in Jesus, this faith that saves, comes through hearing God's word. Paul says later in Romans, faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The good news, the message of what Jesus did to save us. This message we talk about every week, but it's so central to who we are as God's people. That we who at times are reckless or wasteful or lazy or whatever the sin might be, Jesus came to pay for those sins so that we may be reconciled to God, so that we may be children of God, as Paul says in our epistle lesson for today, so that our slavery, as it were, to sin, death, and the devil, that spirit of slavery which causes us to fear, most especially to fear God's righteous wrath for our sin may be replaced by the Holy Spirit himself who enables us to cry out to God, Abba, Father. Our Father, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. It's a prayer we say so much that it's easy at times to kind of lose um, sight or, or or not fully recognize what it is exactly we're praying, but that very first line, Our Father, that Jesus teaches us to pray, is a recognition that if He is our Father, then we are His children. Children. And because we are His children, by the work of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, then we are heirs, Paul says. That's a funny, that's always a funny word, the way it's spelled, H-E-I-R-S, heirs. Inheritors, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Heirs of what? Inheritors of what? Everlasting life. Heaven itself. That Jesus has won for us by his death for our sins and is rising again Easter morning. This is the message the good news that God, the sower, wants to sow and scatter any and everywhere so those who hear it 
by the work of the Holy Spirit may come to know and believe in Jesus Christ and have faith in him when and where it pleases God. It's not as if God looks around and says, well, that person, those people over there, they're going to believe, they're the good ones, so I'm going to sow my, my word into them. No, his word has the power to produce the faith that it demands. He turns our stony and rocky hearts into the good soil which receives the word and produces a crop of righteousness, not only for this life, but for eternity. God has done that for each and every one of us. We see that throughout the scriptures. We see that in the life of St. Paul himself. Remember, Paul had, was known as Saul, the great persecutor of the church, as we read in the book of Acts. How he went and had Christians arrested on account of their faith in Jesus. As he stood by approvingly, as the first martyr of the church, Stephen, was stoned. And yet when the Lord Jesus appeared to him and through the word of God, his heart was changed and Paul became the great confessor and missionary of the church. Nearly half of the New Testament was written by Paul. And he himself would give his life on account of his faith in Jesus. We see other examples of that as well throughout the history of the church. I heard not too long ago the story of the hymn writer John Newton. You're probably, if you're not familiar with him, I know you know his most famous hymn, Amazing Grace. I heard a little bit about him when we were at the uh, Creation Museum with the youth a few weeks ago, and then I did some more reading about him. He was a Uh, He lived in England in the 1700s. He began his his career, so to speak, as a slave trader in England. He even captained a slave ship, bringing slaves from Africa to England. He was also a rather coarse man by his own um, admission, his own uh, autobiography, used foul language, uh, took part in immoral living. And yet, through the powerful and abiding Word of God, his heart was changed by the Holy Spirit. He eventually gave up that life of slave trading. He became a pastor. He wrote hymns, including that hymn, Amazing Grace, and he worked for the abolition of slavery, of the slave trade in England. And so when we sing that hymn, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He was talking first and foremost about himself. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. By God's grace, we too have seen and come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior through the powerful and abiding word of God that God sows so lavishly and generously throughout the world. And he uses people like you and me, sinners ourselves, to help do it. This is one of the things, and I'm going to write about this in my newsletter article, so I won't say too much, but, but this is one of the things that I'm excited about for this time in which we're living in right now. Yes, it's been hard, and it'll continue to be hard, I think, for some time. But God always brings good out of difficulty, right? He did that, of course, with the suffering and death of Jesus, by which he brought salvation to the world. One of the things we had to do, not, not just us, but every church, I think, if, we didn't, if they didn't have it already, we, ha- they, we had to enhance our, our, our technology to be able to broadcast our services online. Um, we were doing a little bit of that before, but not to the extent that we're doing now. And we didn't have a choice because we couldn't meet, for one. And even now, there are some who just 
can't or aren't ready to come back to church. So how do you reach out to them? Well, we use the technology we have, and it's been a process, and it's still not 100% the way I'd want it, but it's getting there. One of the exciting things for me about it is not only are we able to preach and teach the Word of God to our own members who aren't able to be here on Sunday morning or Thursday night, but we're reaching people literally around the world. I'm uh, one of the uh, Facebook page administrators, so I get like top secret access to our Facebook page statistics, and it, you can go in there and it'll tell you not by name, it, won't, it doesn't give you names of who's watching, but where they're watching from. And as you can imagine, most of the people are watching locally, Racine or Kenosha area. But we have, and again, I don't know how often, you know, or how many times, that's some of the data I don't quite understand how to interpret, but, but these are just some of the places where people are watching from. Tucson, Arizona, Fort Worth, Texas, Oshkosh, that's not too far away, Wisconsin, Winnipeg, Canada, Andai, Indonesia, Peshawar, Pakistan. And, it, and here's a list of some of the countries where people have watched from, Indone- uh, besides the U.S., that's like by far the, the highest. But then next comes Indonesia, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Germany, Canada, Myanmar, Saudi Arabia, and the list goes on. And that's just our church. Many of our, like I said, if not all of our sister Missouri Synod congregations, as well as others, are doing the same thing. Because we had to. Yet because we had to, the word of God is being shared throughout the world it always had been through missionaries and so forth, but now in, an even, in another way. I'm just looking forward to what God has in store for us in the future. Because as the prophet Isaiah, uh, as we read in the prophet Isaiah, God's word has power to change lives for eternity. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So thank you again, my friends, for your prayers and support and encouragement, for your faithfulness as we, as God's vessels, God's instruments work to share this abiding, his abiding word with many, not just within our own congregation, our own community, but literally around the world. And I know that one day we will be joined by many in heaven who, like us, have heard the word of God and by the work of the Holy Spirit came to know and believe in Jesus as their Savior And with them, we will reap a harvest of righteousness for eternity. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Lord, mighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. Give to our hearts your perfect peace, that we may not be anxious nor live in fear, but rest all our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for the word to be planted, that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your spirit accompanies the witness of your people who speak your word before the world. Grant success to the missionary and mission planter and to every pastor and church worker, that those who hear may believe and those who believe may bear the good fruit of faith in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have given power to the nations and to those who govern to act for the good of your people. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to lead us, that justice may prevail and your people may be free to live at peace with all people. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you know how weak and frail we are. Give to those afflicted in mind, body, or soul the fullness of your healing grace, that according to your will they may be restored to health. Hear us for those who are suffering or recovering from the pandemic's ravages, for those who have requested our prayers, especially Tom Clark, Sheila Holbus, and Walter Bone, and for all those we name quietly in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have granted us great riches and gifts. Keep our hearts from being overburdened by the things of this mortal life, whether in time of plenty or in time of want. Deliver us from persecution and sustain us from all tribulation, that our hearts may ever be fixed upon the true treasure of your grace. Accept the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, your word endures forever. Keep us from being tossed about by every wind of change and chance and help us to endure upon the firm foundation of your word and sacraments. Bless the members of our congregation, including those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Shirley Reshin as she celebrates her 94th birthday, as well as the families on our prayer list, namely the families of Marilyn, Nancy, Richard, and Alan. Prepare us so that we may worthily receive the Lord's body and blood and be kept by this blessed communion toward the day when we shall be reunited with all those who have gone before us and dwell in your presence forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God, 
Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. 
Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take 
eat and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Come unraveled against your tyranny God my Lord unites with me my sadness I am baptized into Christ to inherit paradise take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you Glory be 
to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 582, God's Word is Our Great Heritage. God's Word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever to spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor through life it guides our way, in death it is our stay. Lord, grant while worlds endure, we keep its teachings pure. 